seems like everywhere you go, you run into experts at something. I've known people that like that my whole life. In the org, out of the org, and work, in the workplace. These people that seem to have an opinion on everything, they're experts on everything, and in reality, they know nothing. We've all run into the armchair quarterbacks or the barroom attorneys who tell you what you should do. I don't like giving advice because what worked for me isn't necessarily going to work for you. But how many times have you run into people that would tell you, this is what you need to do? And yet, it's very possible that they've never been through it. They'll talk all day for what they think they should do, but they don't know. I've noticed this, now let's face it, we all know over opinionated people. I had a Bible instructor who had an opinion on everything, and this was a guy who literally knew nothing. And I eventually had to turn deaf ears to him because he really talked out of his backside. But he always had an opinion on something. This is what you need to do, this is what you should do. When, when it came to my personal business, I opted to leave that out of the org because somebody always wanted to play big brother there. When in all honesty, they had a lot less, less life experience than I did, so I kept it on the outside. There are some subjects that I will not touch on on YouTube as far as a born ins perspective. The indoctrination from a born ins point of view. I could tell you nothing on that except from what I hear. I was in the organization the best 10 years, and most of those years I was already awake. I can tell you about the org from my perspective. To think that somebody is more qualified to talk about it because they were born in is actually wrong to tell people because all you can do is tell it from your perspective. In all honesty, when people leave the org, which is a good thing, that's only half the battle. Unfortunately, from a born in's point of view, this I can tell you, they may leave and still look at the world from a Watchtower Eyes perspective. So now that they're out of the org, it's kind of like having a baby in a wading pool one day and then throwing them in the ocean. It doesn't work. I already knew what the outside world was like. I spent most of my life there and when the JW elders would tell me about the world and worldly people, I already knew that their perspective was bullshit. I mean, it was kind of ridiculous. I mean, you cannot tell somebody who spent the majority of their life outside what people on the outside world are like. Okay, that didn't work too well. Now, when people come out on YouTube, they can tell you about their experience. But like I said, they're at different levels. The unfortunate thing, there may be some YouTubers that may decide to start a channel a little too soon. They may want to get their feet wet first because they still may have an unrealistic view of the world. They're out of the org, but the unfortunate thing is they're setting themselves up to go right back in. Because in all honesty, people outside the organization are not going to be like they are inside the organization. Things on the outside are not automated like they are on the inside. There was a, one young girl, this is going back about two years, she was a former JW and she started uploading videos. Nice kid from what I remember. Very upbeat, very pleasant to listen to. And she was going on about starting her life over and telling people you can start your life over and over and over and I'm thinking I didn't know how old the girl was, she was very young, and I didn't know how long she'd been out, but I wasn't sure how much life experience she'd had on the outside. The unfortunate thing was she had a bad breakup shortly thereafter, and that kind of toppled her world, as it would anybody her age, but in all honesty, I think she set herself up to fall by doing YouTube videos a little too soon before she got a little taste of the real world because the outside world can be a harsh place. It can also be a pleasant place. Inside the org can be just as harsh. It's just hidden behind this veneer of 
pleasantness when you really know it's not. <clears throat> Some people can be a little bit more upfront on the outside, and I think a lot of uh, JWs and a lot of XJWs aren't quite used to that. They may see direct, harsh comments as an attack when it really isn't. It's the real world, but they're not used to that. And the unfortunate thing is by doing so without any life's experience, wonder why from their limited perspective of the world, why maybe their videos aren't really getting any views or many subscribers because the only thing they can tell you is their perspective of inside the organization. And it does nothing with helping people to escape the organization that are in. Like I said, everybody's at different levels. Now, there are a lot of, a lot of channels that I just don't watch anymore because they, from my point of view, they do not relate to me anymore. I've been out for three years now, and I was never really an indoctrinated witness, so it was easy for me just to walk away and start over. There were a lot of people who were in for many, many, many decades, lifers, some born-ins, whose lives were completely turned upside down and devastated, and I feel for them. I was not one of them. But when I stepped back out, when I found out that I was disfellowshipped, many JWs would have been hurt, devastated, crushed. It was like a sigh of relief for me. It was like a weight lifted off my shoulder. It didn't hurt me. I felt free. I could now live my life. And I put everything back together relatively quickly. Well, actually, I was starting long before I was DF'd. And the unfortunate thing is it wasn't the organization that took me down financially, although that was the worst financial situation I'd ever been in. No, I compromised myself to be one of Jehovah's Witnesses, and looking back on it, that was not the right thing to do. I was always very good at handling my own finances, so it was very easy for me to recoup my losses and put things back together. Not everybody can do that, and not all former Jehovah's Witnesses can do that. They have a lot of issues to cover first. But before anybody starts uploading videos, if you're wondering why maybe you're not getting the attention you should, it's probably because you should, before you attempt to help other people, you probably should first learn to help yourself. Because if your life isn't going anywhere, and you may be relaying this on your videos, that's not going to attract a lot of views because this is not what people are looking for. People are looking, looking to be lifted up, not being put back down. And there are times when sometimes just people's videos will do that because they have yet to taste the outside world. And the unfortunate thing now, when they see what the outside world is like, they start believing what Watchtower told them. Worldly people are all satanic. Worldly people are all evil. Worldly people will all stab you in the back. The world is an ugly place, and this will come back to haunt them until they run right back into the organization. And there are a few YouTubers out there that are in that category. They could easily be pulled back in. The trick is, if you're out, you can no longer talk like a Jehovah's Witness. It's too robotic. It's too black and white. Just because somebody thinks this way does not make them a hater. Just because somebody is no longer Christian, you can't judge them. You don't know anybody's personal situations, but you still want to think like one of Jehovah's Witnesses, and it doesn't work in the real world, and you're setting yourself up to go back. And the thing is, <clears throat> you did leave for a reason. And if you left, do you really want to go back? If you fall on the outside, face it, we're all going to fall. I've fallen more times than I could shake a stick at, but I've always managed to get up. And as far as life's experience, when is it that you learn things? Is it when things are going good or when things are going bad? Because the thing is, when things are going good for me, and many times they do, you put everything else on the back burner. You're not absorbing any information because you don't have to. No, it's usually when you've fallen on your face and lose everything or things aren't going so good that you have to engage your brain. Okay, what am I doing that's causing this? And this is, you've always got to figure, 
Don't blame outside sources, although maybe outside sources can play a hand in it. But what can I do to pick this up? What can I do to rectify this? So opposed to blaming other people or the outside world for your own failures, you may want to take a look at yourself and think, what am I doing? Otherwise, you may as well be back in the org. And let's face it, the org is an ugly, controlling place. You at least can be a little bit more flexible on the outside. You still have to be careful on the outside as well. And you always have to be cautious. But the world is not quite as ugly as Watchtower would have you believe, considering Watchtower is working for the same establishment that is pulling the strings everywhere else. So, whether you're in Watchtower or not, I've got news for you. You are part of the world. Anyways, guys, that's all i got to say today. I will talk to you soon. You guys have a good day.